Over the past 13 months, there have been close to 30 million confirmed COVID-19 cases in the United States. While most patients have recovered and returned to their normal health, some patients continue to have symptoms that last for weeks or even months after their initial COVID infection. In general, if patients still have COVID symptoms four weeks after the infection, they are classified as having post-COVID syndrome. These patients are referred to as long haulers. The most common long hauler symptoms include coughing, intermittent fever, persistent fatigue, aches, chest pain, heart palpitation, shortness of breath, loss of taste and smile, difficulty sleeping, headaches, anxiety, depression, brain fog. Patients with brain fog report being unusually forgetful, confused, and unable to concentrate. Some patients experience persistent symptoms, while others have symptoms that come and go. It is estimated that about 10% of COVID-19 patients become long haulers. Post-COVID syndrome can affect any COVID patient, regardless of their age, status of health, and the severity of their COVID infection. Even people with an asymptomatic COVID infection can develop post-COVID syndrome. About four weeks ago, the Journal of American Medical Association Network Open published a research letter entitled Sequelae in Adults at Six Months After COVID-19 Infection. It reported that approximately 30% of patients experienced persistent post-COVID symptoms. As shown in the upper table, 177 individuals with COVID-19 were followed up for a median of 169 days after the onset of the disease. The lower table shows that both outpatients and hospitalized patients experienced similar percentages of persistent symptoms. The most common symptoms were fatigue and loss of smell or taste. It is still largely unknown why some patients have persistent COVID symptoms. There are a few hypotheses for the mechanisms of post-COVID syndrome. The COVID infection can trigger the immune system to overreact continuously even though the infection has resolved. A European study demonstrated ongoing heart inflammation in 60% of patients who recently recovered from COVID. Some patients with post-COVID syndrome generate autoantibodies which attack their own healthy tissues. Some experts believe that COVID-19 can cause dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system regulates blood pressure, heart rate, breathing, and digestion, and its disruption can cause fatigue, headaches, brain fog, and exercise intolerance. In addition, tiny blood clots can contribute to post-COVID syndrome. Many patients have elevated levels of coagulation factors in the blood, which make them more susceptible to blood clotting. The COVID virus can infect and damage the cells lining the blood vessels, which further increases the risk for blood clots. Many organs, such as the heart, the brain, lungs, legs, the liver, and kidneys, have been shown to be damaged by tiny blood vessel clots. Currently, there is no specific treatment for post-COVID syndrome. Many major medical centers in the United States have opened post-COVID-19 clinics to help manage patients' long hauler symptoms. Post-COVID patients are recommended to have adequate hydration, plenty of rest, eat and sleep well, and learn to manage stress effectively. Integrative medicine, such as acupuncture, massage therapy, meditation, etc., may help symptom relief. In addition, many patients may require symptom-specific medication treatment to improve their quality of life. For example, patients may be prescribed antidepressants for depression, sleeping pills for insomnia, anticoagulants for blood clot, 
bronchodilators for difficulty in breathing, etc. In my practice, I have been taking care of several patients with post-COVID syndrome. One patient developed a blood clot in his lower leg one month after his COVID infection. He also had significant brain fog and fatigue. The patient was given anticoagulation treatment, and because of his concomitant symptoms of brain fog and fatigue, which raised concerns of tiny blood clots elsewhere in his body, his anticoagulation treatment was extended to three months while he's being closely monitored. The other post-COVID patient experienced significant fatigue and shortness of breath. Even walking inside her house caused her to be short-winded. Her pulmonary function tests showed that her lung diffusion capacity had decreased by over 50%. The lung diffusion capacity estimates the ability of the lungs to transfer gas from inhaled air into the bloodstream and is used as a surrogate marker of the extent of lung damage. The patient was treated with bronchodilator and prednisone and her symptoms resolved after one month. Because there are so many unknowns in the area of post-COVID syndrome, many studies have been initiated. Currently, multiple experimental treatments for post-COVID syndrome are being developed in the United States. Last month, the National Institutes of Health announced a funding of $1.15 billion for the investigation of post-COVID syndrome. This table summarizes the interventional studies for post-COVID syndrome. The left column shows the treatment modalities. The right column lists the sponsoring companies. I'm going to briefly discuss each study in case interested post-COVID patients would like to enroll in the clinical trials. PureTech, a biotherapeutics company, started a clinical tool trial of LYT-100 for post-COVID respiratory complications and related sequelae. LYT-100 is a chemical with antifibrotic and anti-inflammatory properties. Organicell Regenerative Medicine, a biopharmaceutical company, has developed its proprietary therapeutic called Zosin, which may help treat COVID lung haulers. Zofin is derived from perinatal sources and contains over 300 growth factors, cytokines and chemokines, etc. Cytodine, a biotech company, is conducting a phase two study of virologics on its efficacy and safety in patients experiencing lung hauler symptoms. Low dose naltrexone and nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide patch are being evaluated to determine if the combination treatment can improve fatigue and quality of life of post-COVID patients. Nebulized autologous platelet lysate, which can be inhaled via a handheld ultrasonic nebulizer, is being studied to see if, if the treatment can improve pulmonary function tests. Oxaloacetate has been approved for clinical trial for the treatment of fatigue in women with a history of COVID-19. Ruconest, a recombinant C1 asterisk inhibitor, will be tested to determine whether it can improve neurological symptoms such as extreme fatigue, loss of taste, brain fog, and or seizures in patients with post-COVID-19 syndrome. In summary, about 10% of COVID-19 patients suffer from post-COVID syndrome. These patients are called lung haulers. Currently, there is no specific treatment for the lung hauler syndrome. About 100 post-COVID-19 clinics have opened nationwide to help patients with their symptoms, and multiple interventional clinical studies have also been initiated in the United States.